Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this first church service of 2018. So happy new year. I didn't say that last week when we were here on New Year's Eve. So happy new year to all of you. Welcome to the last Sunday of Christmas tide. Yes, this is Epiphany Sunday when we celebrate the coming of the wise men. And yes, our last last Sunday of, of Christmas. So we get to enjoy all this beautiful decoration just today. So I want to welcome all of you to worship. Let us come. Let the Holy Spirit bind us together, be with us as we gather and as we worship. Please stand for our call to worship. A new year is before us. A new year to laugh and learn. A new year to love and treasure each moment. A new year to grow in faith and share our blessings. A new year to sing and praise and worship with our whole heart. Please join in hymn 245, the first Noel. We're going to be singing verses 1, 3, 4, and 5. Thank you. 
Would you please join in our opening prayer? O oh God, we come before you as a people gathered to behold the Christ, a light dawn that cannot be extinguished. In this new year, we offer special thanks for this community of faith and your faithful presence. Help us to see more clearly your glorious light that we will open our hearts to your reign on earth and dedicate our lives to your service. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to invite up our, uh, our young disciples. All right. <laughs> and it's just Morgan. <laughs> See if others come join us while we talk. <laughs> All right. Come on. <laughs> He's very reluctant. <laughs> All right. Come up with moms. All right. Well, Happy New Year. So this uh, Sunday we call Epiphany. It's a big word. It means reveal. But this is the coming of who? If you look in our little nativity, do you see the three guys with crowns? Who are they supposed to be? The wise men, yeah, and what did they, and did they bring something to Jesus? Do you remember what they brought? Do you remember the, the gifts? Yeah, they brought gold, and they brought frankincense, and they brought myrrh. So I thought I'd show you and everybody. This is actually, if you look on the screen, that's frankincense. It grows like that. It's really hard. So hard. You see them with the knife? It's such a hard substance. You have to use a knife to cut it, and that's what it looks like on the tree that you cut. And frankincense gets ground up, and it was used for prayer. It was used in incense. That was used in prayer in the temple. This is myrrh. That's a little bush, and that's in Israel. And you would take what that comes from. See, that's it there. And you ground it up, and myrrh is used in a ritual for burial. And then, of course, what's that? You know what that is? You know what that is? It's gold. Yeah, that's a big piece of gold. So these were the gifts that they brought, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Very valuable gifts, actually, very valuable gifts. So on this day, as we think about these wise men and these gifts that they brought to Jesus, what gifts are we going to bring in this new year? Can you think of a gift maybe we can bring? What could we bring? Maybe we could bring our worship, right, like we're doing today, being in Sunday school. Maybe we could bring our prayers, so I invite you, every time you pray, think of that as a gift that you're giving. Maybe our love. Maybe the way we help those in need. Do you think that'd be a gift that Jesus would want? Well, I want you to think about, in this new year, all the gifts that we're going to bring as we think of the wise men and the gifts that they brought and how valuable they were. But you know what? We all have gifts that we can share. So let's think about the gifts that we're going to bring to help and share love. Because I think that's what Jesus would love most. So let's say a prayer. Oh, God, thank you for these young disciples. Thank you for this new year ahead of us. Be with all of our young disciples. Be with everyone here, young to old, as we think of the wise men, the gifts that they brought, how valuable they are, but also the gifts that we bring in this new year. Large and small, it does not matter. So be with these young disciples. Watch over them. Keep them safe. Amen. As they go back to their seats, I invite you to stand. Let's share the gift of peace and love with one another as we share the peace of Christ with each other. <laughs> peace be with you. Good morning. Good morning.
Thank you, that was beautiful. Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Isaiah, the glory of Zion. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you, all assemblies, and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all the Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. Thank you. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Matthew's gospel on this Epiphany Sunday, the story of the wise men. It's there in your bulletin. I invite you to stand for our gospel lesson this morning. Hear these words from Matthew's gospel. The wise men set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. May God add a blessing to our hearing, living out of the word this day. You may be seated. Before her death in 2006, Jean Calumet was the oldest living human whose age could be verified by official documentation. This remarkable French lady claimed she owed her longevity to chocolate and olive oil and port wine. So there you go. There's a diet for you. On her 120th birthday celebration, someone asked Miss Calumet, what is your vision of the future? With a twinkle in her eye, she replied, very brief. <laughs> this may be humorous, but, um, you know, think about the question for a minute. What is our vision of the future? We all have visions, dreams, hopes of what our future should look like. This Sunday in the church calendar is called Epiphany. Epiphany just simply means to reveal. And this is where we celebrate the coming of those magi, those Gentile, non-Jewish astrologers who caught sight of a larger vision, who, after seeing a star, left their homes for at least an eight-month journey to worship a new king that had been born. So I came across some modern-day proverbs that really spoke to me. Here's a, a few of them that I found. One is, little by little, the, bill, the bird builds its nest. It's a great one. Little by little, the bird builds its nest. Or um, a beautiful funeral doesn't guarantee heaven. Um, after mountains, more mountains. It's an interesting one. And then my favorite one that I want to use for today is, if you want to see, you have to look twice. So if you want to see, you have to look twice. There's a book by the author Stephanie Paulsell, and it's called Honoring the Body. And uh, it's all about the Christian practice, spiritual disciplines of taking care of our beautiful, vulnerable, God-given bodies. And in the book, it includes this very touching story of a bride on her wedding day. And it is all the usual trappings, the beautiful dress and the flowers and the hair and the makeup and family coming in from out of town and all the rest that you would expect. And everything has been prepared. Everything is ready. Her father's by her side. Bride's ready to walk down the aisle. The doors to the chapel are open. And there she sees at the end her soon-to-be husband at the end of this long aisle. He's standing there smiling at her, full, just full of love, just full of love, and she just freezes. For a split second, she was paralyzed, unable to move. And in that moment, she had a, a personal epiphany, a personal revelation. Maybe it was because fresh in her memory was the funeral service she had just had for her mother. Because as she looked down that aisle, 
all she could think about as she saw that husband-to-be was that someday he was going to die. She couldn't love him. She couldn't marry him because one day he was going to die. And then she looked twice, like that proverb says, and she saw things more clearly. She saw the, the presence of death, inevitable as it may be, makes love all the more urgent. And it makes it all the more powerful and all the more committed and all the more vulnerable and all the more tender. And so this is what she did. She took a deep breath and she stepped into the sanctuary and began the most wonderful, beautiful walk of her life. It is so appropriate that we begin this new year with Epiphany Sunday, a time to see things in a new way, to catch sight of a larger vision, an image of what our world can be, of what our lives can yet be. Like the Magi of old, we need to open our minds, stretch our imaginations, and be ready for the journey that's ahead of us. And we heard the story. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay homage. When King Herod heard this, he was threatened and frightened in all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them, where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. So King Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in its rising until it stopped over the place of this child. What fascinates me is this, when I hear that piece of scripture, is that hundreds of thousands, thousands of other people living in that part of the world there in Judea saw the same bright light in the sky. But they did not leave their homes to go find this newborn king, so what was different about these magi? It's their vision. It's that they looked twice and they saw something different because these magi were searching and seeking and following. I invite us this day to have an epiphany, to have a new vision and a new way of seeing. This year at our Christmas service, which we do at all our Christmas services, we sing the glorious hymn, Joy to the World. It's truly a triumphant part of that, of that service, this majestic, this glorious piece of music. And so I was reflecting on singing that music while in my mind's eye seeing the The wise men set out following that star until it stops over where? A humble house in Bethlehem. This tiny, poor little city of Israel. But that star could have easily stopped over the city Soleil, Haiti's largest slum, home to half a million people. Or it could have stopped over the poorest neighborhood in Milwaukee. So I saw them following that star right down into those narrow, overcrowded streets, hitching up their regal road, standing there knee-deep in poverty and sorrow. And when they arrived outside of this house, I saw them standing there paralyzed, as frozen as that bride was in her wedding dress, unable to move, overwhelmed by the forces of oppression that made that little baby lie in such mean a state as we sing in one of our hymns. But then, but then they looked twice. And they saw two young, poor parents with their child nursing so quietly. For as they looked again, they saw the faith and the light of Mary and Joseph, the faith of this couple, where Mary, young and probably scared by an angel's sudden announcement one day, proclaimed these words in Scripture, Here am I, a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. The faith of Joseph to take Mary to be his wife when she became pregnant before they were married in the face of great fear of what others might do to them and do to their baby. They looked twice, and as scripture says, these magi were what? Overwhelmed with joy. For held in Mary's arms was the one who has faith made flesh, the one who releases us from fear to hope, the one who comes into our broken world to save it and redeem it. God made flesh. 
God coming into our world and into our lives. They looked twice and they saw that it was God born in humility, siding with the poor and the weak and the forgotten and turning everything upside down. They had gifts with them, of course, gold, a gift fit for a king, frankincense, the incense fit for a priest, and myrrh, a herb traditionally used in burial. And what those wise men didn't know or maybe they did based on these gifts, is that this little baby would grow to suffer and die. But that only made their love for him more urgent, more powerful, more committed, more vulnerable, more tender. They saw the shadow of death, and then they looked again and they saw things more clearly. And so this is what they did. They took a deep breath and stepped into the sanctuary and began the most wonderful, beautiful walk of their lives up to that child. I want to challenge us this day to take a deep breath and take a step out on the journey of faith into this new year. I want to urge us to catch sight of a larger vision to grow in our faith and in the likeness of Christ each day, where our hearts and our minds and our actions become so in sync and become like his, where our concern for the poor and the weak is his, where our passion for peace and hope and for sharing our faith in love is his, where we reflect the light of Christ into all the areas of our lives and our world. I invite us this day to look twice and see that. The majesty, the mystery, the wonder and joy of the star that is still shining, still transforming hearts and lives. For we are no different than those wise men we read about this morning. Every single one of us is being led by something. Sure, it's not a star in the sky, but something is leading us. Every one of us is being shaped by something in our lives. Every one of us is giving our time and our energy to something. And the question to ponder this day in this new year is, what is that something? What is shaping you? What are we giving our time and energy to? Where are we heading in life? Just because we can't see the star doesn't mean it isn't there guiding us. So on this first Sunday of the new year, let's proclaim for this day and the whole year ahead of us that the journey is just beginning as we declare that into this new year we're going to celebrate what an unbelievable life we've had so far, the accomplishments, the many blessings, and yes, even the hardships, because they've served to make us stronger. That in this year we'll focus not on what we don't have, but on the wonderful things God has already given us, and take control of the things we can change ourselves. For the change we want to see always begins with us. And we'll remember that to worry It's just a waste of time because our faith in God will give us strength and a hope and a peace that passes all understanding. Let us come with renewed strength for the journey ahead because we know that tomorrow is going to be a new day, a new beginning, a new opportunity to focus on the wonder and the majesty and the brilliant love of God that surrounds us as we offer our best, offer our gifts, offer to let our our light shine for all to see and be transformed. And so let us, like those wise men and that bride at the end of that aisle, let's take a deep breath and let's step out to begin the most wonderful, beautiful walk of our lives. Amen. Let's stand. Let us sing in response as we sing hymn 254 in our hymnal, We Three Kings.
So let us come to share our joys, our concerns, that which, for which we praise God for, and, and uh, that that we lift up in prayer. I want to, our ushers will come. We have microphones that we'll give to you as you have joys and concerns. We can hear one another, and those at home can hear you. So what are your joys? What are your concerns? I'll start here with Herb. The question has been asked for several times over the last a uh, couple of months, how many days? Randy, you don't have to answer that question any longer. <laughs> Thank you, Herb. Um, yeah, it may sound sudden to some of you, but this has been, as Debbie will attest, uh, like a six to God knows how long uh, decision-making process, and I did have an app on my phone that was counting down the days. Um, Friday was my last day of work. I'm officially retired. And we are starting a new chapter. We're in 10 days. We're heading down to Arizona for six weeks. So uh, we, this is a perfect epiphany. It's starting the new year, <laughs> starting a new, a new challenge for us. So you thank go. you. Thanks. All right. <laughs> and the flowers on the altar today are from Randy and Debbie in celebration of Randy's retirement on Friday. So we wish him all the best in prayer uh, this morning. So other prayers of your heart, other joys, other concerns, other prayers that you may have to lift up. Um, I do want to lift up, I want to lift up Eileen. Uh, and I don't know if you can share much more, Joe. I know that she was going to Pittsburgh, that her mom was not doing well. And her mom was, uh, the way she phrased it was her mom was going to be dying. And so I don't know what has happened since. But. So I expect to hear from her later today on how things are going. But she was, her mom was up eating and doing the dishes. Go figure. <laughs> okay. So we pray for Eileen and her family who are in, uh, and Penny. So down here, we'll get Penny. So we're going to pray for Eileen and her family as they gather with her mom in Pittsburgh um, while she's in hospice. I'll just share a joy and an update on Sam. Um, he's been on Humara for a little over two months. And he's in Homestead's musical, and there are videos of this boy running around the auditorium doing burpees and planks and what have you, getting ready for the musical. And so, so far, so good. All right. Great. Continue prayers with Sam. Uh, yeah. Um, prayers for my uncle Lee, who has brain cancer, and after his second surgery this last summer, he's blind and deaf, and he fell again, third time in a month, fell really hard, and so they're just really concerned about him, and he's super frustrated, so. So for your uncle. Um, Ed, right, uh, right back there. I would ask for prayers for Sam Ramirez, a former member and one of my close friends. He's undergoing surgery tomorrow to replace a heart valve. Okay. All right. Prayers for Sam in this time. Also, um, prayers for Ruth Groth. Um, her daughter called, uh, called me late on Friday to let me know that Ruth wasn't doing so good. And... Um, she said, now maybe, maybe she'll show up in church on Sunday. That would shock me. But she said, just tell the congregation that Ruth's days of coming to church are probably over. And Ruth probably won't be able to manage the strength anymore to really get up and come here. So keep Ruth in uh, your prayers and Diane, um, as Ruth is just really struggling right now. So if you want to give her a card or a call, but certainly keep her in prayer. Yeah, Maxine. Prayers for a friend of mine, Vicki, who is going in for rather serious surgery on Tuesday. So, all right. Thank, for, keep Vicki in your prayers. All right, for Vicki, we will keep her in our prayers. Other prayers, other joys or concerns? Well, I do invite you for those on our prayer team to keep them in your prayers. Our hearts at home, those serving our nation. The card you got at the beginning of the service, you know, let us know you're here, but also if you have a prayer request, I invite you to fill that out so we can pray with you and pray for you in this, 
in this uh, time, and especially as we become more deeply committed to prayer in this new year. So, oh, and for Bridget Baker, who lost her cousin, Montrell, last Sunday we had, we had lifted him in prayer that he was going in for emergency surgery, and then the next, on Tuesday, um, he passed away. So he was very young, it was a very sudden kind of shock for them. So prayers for Bridget Baker, the loss of her cousin, uh, Montrell. So with these prayers you've named and those in our hearts, let's pause and let us be in prayer. Almighty God, we uh, gather this morning, gather together um, as the body of Christ. We gather again to once again celebrate this epiphany, this, this time we have to not only mark the coming of the wise men, but also to take a second look, to see your light and your grace and your hope shining into this world, revealing new things, new paths, new opportunities. Help us, O oh Lord, to, to see with your eyes, love with your heart, reach out with your hands to this world. As we come this morning and as we are in prayer and we lift up those in need of prayer, for those we lift up who are, are struggling with illnesses and with injuries, those struggling with cancer, and, and um, we pray for your healing presence. For those undergoing surgery, and we pray for healing for them, wisdom and skill for the doctors and nurses who, who work with them. We lift in prayer those mourning losses, and we pray for them in the midst of grief that they see your light and feel your hope and your comfort and your peace that surrounds them. Oh, Lord, we, we come and we pray for a world around us that as we look out can look so very broken and, and battered, but help us to look again, to see all those who hear your call and are, are there very quietly at work doing and sharing your love and your grace and your hope, touching one life after another, sometimes in quiet ways, but making tremendous differences. Help us, O oh Lord, to see and, and to respond as we look out at this world and, and as we see the many blessings that we have, blessings of new stages of life, new chapters of retirement. Um, as we look out and as we see our blessings of family and friends that surround us, our church family that prays for us, and as we see most of all your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who was born in such, humble, in such a humble station, who grew and who has, has knows all of our hurts and our pains, has suffered them himself, but yet who died on the cross and rose for our sake and gives us that ultimate hope that we can ever have a hope in a life and a life after this life. So, oh Lord, help us to see this, that in our lives as we go through, we are, we are never alone, no matter what we may face, for you are with us. Oh, Lord, we come to lift these prayers, but there's others on our hearts, so we pause just for a moment just to let your Holy Spirit nudge us and touch us and speak to us, reveal to us in this time of silent prayer. Oh, Lord, we lift you all these prayers, both silent and spoken, in the name of the one who does journey with us through all our days. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Uh, well, let's uh, do our announcements here. So first of all, our parish nurses, they're going to do blood pressure checks. So right after service down in Fellowship Hall, go to fellowship time or go before fellowship time or whatever. You can head down to Fellowship Hall and they'll do blood pressure checks. Also, we're beginning our new, new year, so it's time to sing. So our women's choir, they start rehearsals. We're just getting right at it. <laughs> First Sunday of the year, women's choir tonight at 6, sanctuary choir um, tonight at, at 7, and those in sanctuary choir, yes, indeed, we are singing next Sunday. <laughs> so we got to learn something. Lunch Bunch returns this coming Tuesday, January 9th. Our study will be on Romans, the letter that changed the world. So the study at 11 and our delicious lunch with soup at noon. So you're all invited. Our Tai Chi also on Mondays and Fridays down in Fellowship Hall. And you're invited to that. 
And then I invite you to stay. This is Epiphany, so that means all of our beautiful Christmas decorations got to go away. So please, please stay for a little bit. Uh, we just got to get all these wonderful decorations put away. So get our bins down and get them all away. Yeah. Okay, we just got to get them on the pews. So come grab something, <laughs> put it on a pew. Um, I'm imagining in an organized fashion, <laughs> not scattered around the sanctuary. <laughs> So, just so you know. Um, some others, sign up on our flower chart. It's the new year. Our flower chart's right outside the church office, up these few steps here. Sign up uh, on the flower chart. Our all church gathering is coming up uh, this coming Saturday. January. This is a chance for us as a whole church to gather. And we're going to talk about, you know, our year end, how we ended year end, our budget for the new year, our strategic plan that we're putting together, our new strategic plan, where we're headed. Um, Glenn Van Fossen has graciously volunteered that he's going to do a pancake breakfast. So if nothing else, come at 9.30. We're going to have pancakes and then stay for a meeting. And we won't meet forever and ever. So that's this coming Saturday. Put that on your calendars. Hope to see you all there. Also, um, Susan, right here, she's doing a CPR class, the friends and family. It'll be on Saturday, January 20th at 9 a.m. So this is your chance to learn or relearn those skills for CPR. You get to work on a mannequin. Lots of fun. I've worked with the mannequin. Lots of fun. <laughs> so contact Susan. She's right here. Um, and our drive-in movie is coming up um, January 28th at 4. So this is a wonderful, wonderful chance to come as a church family. We're going to watch Disney's The Emperor's New Groove. So come watch this great, great movie uh, with us. Also, our um, outreach, our uh, auction and dinner is coming up. So it's Saturday, January 27th from 5.30 to 9. You'll notice stuff in the Narthex. I bet you couldn't miss it. There's uh, stuff out there to get your registration. And then also our game. I don't know if anybody wants to speak to that. Okay, Karen will. <laughs> I don't know who that would be. <laughs> okay. Right. And um, so there's an there's a easel out here. So go sign up to be on a team. Come on, take the plunge. It's going to be fun. It'll be easy. We're going to do it together. It'll be a fun night. All of the funds we raise from this night together, it all goes to support missions locally, nationally, and around the world. So it really is a great night, not just a great night as a church family to just be together, but then also all the funds we raise through the silent auction and the other auction goes to support some really worthwhile missions and really make a difference. So be a part of that. Reflections comes back uh, this coming Thursday at 7. So there's information in the insert about that. And then for our personal... Dignity kits. You probably noticed the laundry baskets along the wall. If you haven't, go out, look to your right and down. You'll see all these laundry baskets. They're all labeled. This is for our personal dignity kits. It's a joint little mission we're doing between university school and us. And so our goal is to make a thousand little bags of these. So we have high schoolers coming. It's the day off. Schools have off session. So between Homestead and um, university school, we really want them to come noon to three and we're, they're going to make these. So if you want to help us, you can either donate $4 or bring stuff and put them in, their, in the bins out there. And so all of these are earmarked to go to Puerto Rico. They're in urgent need to go there. So if we can do 1,000, that will be great. They need 12, so if we can do 1,000, we can't do 12,000, but if we could do 1,000 on that day, it would make such a tremendous difference in people's lives in Puerto Rico. So be a part of that as well. Hopefully I covered everything. <laughs> other stuff in here. Um, so let us come. I want to invite our ushers forward to collect our morning offering. And uh, also, big thank you to Ethan here for our gift of music. Um, Ethan's provided music three Sundays in a row. Sang in the cantata, and then last week with his family, and now today. So Ethan, it is so great. And then he goes back to college. When do you go back? week from yesterday. So we'll be saying goodbye to Ethan as he heads off to college. But I want to invite our ushers forward for our morning offering. Let us come. Let us give of our hearts and uh, give of our best. And Ethan, for a gift of music.
Let us pray. O God, for all of our gifts and our blessings and our joys, we give you thanks and praise. As this day we give, we give back to you. We give of our gifts. We give our, our hearts. We pray, O Lord, that through these gifts our eyes may be opened to see new things, new ways, new opportunities, the new blessings that are right there in front of us. Let us, with these gifts, reach out to be your hands and your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. What a great new year this is, and a great time to celebrate communion together. As we come to prepare our hearts for communion, I invite us to join in that prayer of um, that prayer that centers us in his faith as we join together in the Apostles' Creed. So it'll be here. I invite us to read this together. Read with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we come to give thanks for these elements here. Let us be in prayer. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness, brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the very breath of life. When we have turned away and our love has failed, your love has remained steadfast. You have delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, spoke to us through your prophets of the ages. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born, and in your signs and witnesses in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. Almighty God, we celebrate that on that night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body given for you, so that you may be my body for the world to see and to experience. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave thanks, and said, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And so let us join in that prayer that Jesus taught us as we pray together this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. I want to invite up those who are helping 
uh, serve communion this morning. All right. This table is open to all. You don't have to be a member of this church or denomination. This says God's love and grace is free to all, so this gift of communion is free. I invite you to come up to take the bread. You can eat it, take the juice, put it in the baskets at the end. If you have issues with bread, I'm the one with the crackers for gluten issues. So I invite us to come in this new year to come and be nourished and be fed and let our spirits be filled to overflowing with grace and hope and love. Come and receive this great gift offered freely to us all.
I invite us to stand for our prayer after communion. Stay standing as we sing our closing hymn. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we thank you for this table where all are welcomed, all are received, to come and catch a new vision and a new sight of your glories and your majesties, of the amazing ways that you are at work in our lives and throughout this world, in the ways that you nourish our faith, and in the ways you call us forth to share that faith and be a people of love and a people of hope. All in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us join in our closing hymn from the worship and song hymnal, A Star Shone Bright, hymn 3051. <laughs> So let us go forward to let that light shine forth from us. Let us go forward to take that second look, see Christ at work, and let us go to be the hands and the heart, sharing the hope and the grace and the peace of Christ with our world. As we close our service, singing, go in the peace of God.